good to just introduce the general characteristics of E of E and X-ray light. So E of E stands for extreme ultraviolet. We're talking about the region of the spectrum that spans maybe below 100 nanometers to about one nanometer wavelength. So wavelengths 100 to 1,000 times shorter than typical visible wavelengths. And the reason this spectral region is so interesting is that it gives you a lot of power, for example, for elemental identification, chemical identification, or even looking at the magnetic state of a material. And that has to do with the fact that this is ionizing radiation. It's ionizing uh, from specific subshells in an atom. So for example, at the right here, um, you see the absorption coefficient for iron, cobalt, and nickel. Each one of them has an absorption edge in both in the E of E region of the spectrum and in the soft X-ray region of the spectrum. So by doing spectroscopic work, you can look at specific elements. You can also do non-destructive diffraction limited nanoimaging, which I'm gonna tell you quite a bit about, and also pump probe studies that allow you to look at dynamics. And you might think that that's confined to atoms and molecules, but in fact, we're doing a lot of pump probe studies on fundamental characteristics in um, materials. And in particular, the imaging and the time domain studies really require coherence in the light source. Uh, and to make this possible, we use uh, light sources based on a, a, a phenomenon called high order harmonic generation. What you do in high harmonic generation is you focus a femtosecond laser pulse into a gas. Um, uh, it is quite easy with a tabletop laser to get to intensities where those atoms in the gas begin to ionize just because the electric field of the laser is strong enough to pull an electron out of the atom. If that happens, you can end up with electrons that go through this sort of boomerang trajectory that you show here, which is that they ionize at the peak of the electric field of the laser. Then the electron wave function starts to accelerate in the electric field. But of course, it's a laser field, which means it oscillates. And at some point, that electron gets driven back into the vicinity of the uh, of the parent ion. Now, of course, this happens uh, as, a, um, as a wave function. And the picture at the right here is showing a movie of the electron with ionized electron wave function. And it kind of shows that there's some very rapidly uh, oscillating parts of that wave function near the atomic core. That is the high harmonic generation process. You can think of it as an electron that falls back into the ground state and gives up its kinetic energy as a high energy photon. And in that case, you can actually think of high harmonic generation as a laser driven version of the original X-ray source, the X-ray tube. Uh, in an X-ray tube, you boil electrons from a filament, you accelerate them, and then you slam them into a target. In high harmonic generation, you do the same thing, but you make the process fully coherent. You use a coherent electromagnetic field to extract an electron from an atom. You accelerate that electron coherently, and then it collides with a target which, with which that electron is also coherent. Sorry, this is advancing by itself. I don't know exactly why. And that process actually gives us a coherent X-ray emission. All of the atoms act exactly the same, and that's why you get a coherent forward-directed beam. And the result is something that really is a useful light source. So uh, depending on the wavelength of the laser that drives the process, uh, we've now demonstrated that you can span the spectrum 
from the vacuum ultraviolet region all the way through to the soft X-ray region of the spectrum. It's a little counterintuitive. You want longer wavelength lasers to generate shorter wavelength high harmonics. That's because this electron trajectory is, is longer in the case of a longer wavelength laser and the electrons get higher uh, accelerated energy. Um, and that sets the technology, the laser technology that you need to drive this process. And in particular, sources in the EUV are now commercial. Um, and that is primarily because the laser technology that's required is well developed. It's tie sapphire lasers. Um, and uh, so EUV sources of high harmonics are now commercial. The soft X-ray sources, they're in development, mainly what they require, especially for industrial application is uh, very robust min-infrared femtosecond lasers. So that's an active area of development now in our lab and in others. Um, now, in our commercialization activities, we've developed the KM Lab Zoo system, which takes a cryogenically cooled high power Thai sapphire laser and implements the high harmonic light source. And we've done extensive characterization. We've done a lot of engineering to make this the most reliable EUV light source possible. But it is an advanced technology, so you're, you know, uh, you're definitely at the cutting edge here in terms of uh, need for reliability, for stability in the light source. One thing that's important is that the light source doesn't move around, for example, because the spot sizes are very small when you focus them. Uh, but the result is that you can get about 10 to 12 photons per second in a single harmonic in the near EUV, which is 25 to 50 nanometer wavelength. And at 13.5 nanometers, which is the wavelength of interest for EUV lithography, you get 10 to 10 to 10 to the 11 photons per second uh, in a single harmonic order at the wavelength that is used for EUV lithography. So the, the work that John will show uses that single harmonic order. And you know the reason why we use Thai sapphire lasers is that they're actually ideal for this 13.5 nanometer wavelength. The wavelength of the high harmonics that you get is related to the laser wavelength and the type of gas that you use. Um, uh, as I mentioned, you need a, a mid IR laser for soft X ray harmonics, and those are under development. But with the Thai sapphire laser, uh, what you see here is how this high harmonic generation process tunes with wavelength. And this includes the phase matching of the process, which is very important. What you see is that 0.8 uh, microns, depending on whether you use argon or neon or helium, your cutoff photon energy, which is the highest energy photon that you see, is a little over 100 electron volts. And 13 nanometers is 92 EV. So, uh, the brightest source that you'll get is always the shortest wavelength light source where your parameters exceed this phase matching cutoff. So um, that's why we use Thai sapphire lasers. So that's my introduction to high harmonics. Uh, now I'm going to switch to applications. And this is a collage with a number of the different applications that we've applied these light sources to in our labs. Uh, things like looking at spin transport and dynamics, uh, looking at uh, functional properties or uh, structural properties of very thin films, uh, uh, examining exotic nanomaterials like metal lattices to see how structure in the materials affects the, um, affects the phonon spectrum. 
um, and also time resolve photo emission. And I think Don's going to talk a little bit about what they're planning at EMAC in that area. Um, most of what I'm going to focus on uh, in the latter part of my talk, though, is on uh, imaging using these types of light sources. So the technique that we use is called coherent diffractive imaging, and it has been a real revolution in X-ray imaging. And to understand why that's the case, uh, start with sort of a traditional X-ray microscope that's used at a synchrotron and has been around for decades now. Well, it generally uses the synchrotron light source like a light bulb, it focuses light using a condenser zone plate onto a sample. And then it uses an, uh, a zone plate optic to image the sample with magnification onto a CCD. And this technology works, but it is limited by the fact that you're using a zone plate, an X-ray optic for the imaging. And that has tended to leave the, this technology at about 10 times diffraction limited in terms of spatial resolution. Uh, in the last 20 years though, people have developed these coherent imaging techniques where you take a coherent light source and you can either use high harmonics or you can spatially filter a synchrotron light source or more recently, free electron lasers give a good degree of spatial coherence also. But what coherent imaging does is that you take a focused coherent beam and scan it over the surface of your object. And there's a little cartoon at the bottom, an animation showing the idea behind this. Scan the uh, beam over the surface at each location, you just record the scattered light pattern, which is generally just a splotch. It's going to be, sorry about this, it keeps advancing on me. It, it's, it's generally going to be um, uh, just, you know, like reflecting a laser pointer off a rough surface or something like that. But through computation, you can actually recover the full image of the sample here. And the idea is that you notice that we're moving this beam uh, through a series of overlapping spots. As the coherent light diffracts, you're mixing phase information with amplitude information. And by scanning the beam over the surface, you're changing that mix in a way that can be predicted computationally and that allows you to actually extract an image. So we were the first to demonstrate this type of imaging with high harmonic sources. And it's been rapidly developing over the past five or 10 years. A big driver of this is, the, is GPUs really, because you do need a lot of computation to do this. But the technical advantage is that now you're not limited by the quality of the optics that you use in your microscope. You can go all the way down to the diffraction limit in spatial resolution uh, with this type of coherent imaging. And you know, over the past decade, we've demonstrated this. This shows our record spatial resolution of about 12 and a half microns um, comparison between SEM and uh, a, an electron microscope in this coherent diffractive imaging showing very good resolution. This 